Hello friends, in this video, I will be discussing about National Medical Commission and Medical Advisory Council under National Medical Commission Act of 2019. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about National Medical Commission and also Medical Advisory Council. And also, I will be giving brief introduction with regard to four important statutory bodies that is Autonomous Board under the National Medical Commission Act of 2019. National Medical Commission Act of 2019 was passed on 8th of August. Let's look into the chapterization of this legislation. The National Medical Commission Act 2019 has 61 sections and 8 chapters. Chapter 1 is Preliminary which discusses about the preamble and the definition. Chapter 2 discusses about National Medical Commission that is from section 3 to section 12. Chapter 3 discusses about Medical Advisory Council. This is advising body for National Medical Commission from chapter 11 to 13. Chapter 4 discusses about National Examination that is single entry, and exit exams from section 14 to 15. Chapter 5 discuss about the four important autonomous boards that is from section 13, 16 to 34. Chapter 6 talks about recognition of medical qualifications from section 35 to 40. Chapter 7 is regarding the grants, audit and accounts. And finally the miscellaneous from section 45 to 61. If you look at the organogram of National Medical Council Act, the top it is the National Medical Commission headed by the chairperson and various members. In shortly, I will be discussing about that. And there is a Medical Advisory Council for NMC. And there are four important boards. They are autonomous boards. And I will be making a separate video to discuss the power and function of this autonomous board separately. Now first, let's discuss about the preliminary. Here, the chapter 1 talks about preamble and definition. If you look at the preamble of this legislation, it clearly says, it discusses about the medical education system, how to improve the access to quality and affordable medical education. Second was ensure the availability of adequate and high quality medical professions across the country. It also discusses about to promote equitable and universal health coverage in the keeping the concept of community health perspective and make services of medical professions accessible to all citizens across the country. It also focuses on promotion of national health goals, encourages medical professionals to adopt latest medical research and also to contribute to the research. It also an objective of periodic and transparent assessment of these medical institutions, so-called medical colleges, facilitate the maintenance of medical register for India. And also it enforces high ethical standards during the provision of medical services by the doctors. It also engages to be flexible to adapt to the changing needs such as COVID and, are, and also various public health policies. It also focuses on effective grievance redressal mechanism in this legislation. Considering the section 2, it talks about the definition. You need to understand, comparing to Medical Council of India, in National Medical Commission, there has been a difference with regard to license for medical practice and registration for medical practice. License means license to practice medicine in any part of India from the respective state. That means you need to take license from the state medical council. Then what is this? Registration. As soon as a person passes the exit exam, he will be able to enter into the permanently 
national medical register that means he will have a unique id of registration of national under national medical commission once he gets the permanent registration he can apply to the state medical council to practice license to practice medicine that means as a doctor now i have to apply for single registration under the national medical commission and this national medical commission will me will give me a unique id for national registration and now once i get the registration number from that number i need to apply to various states where i am going to practice suppose i am going to practice in karnataka i need to apply for state medical council to license to practice and also if i want to practice in state of tamil nadu kerala and also if i want to practice in uttarakhand then i need to take license from these various four states now the question is from various doctors why we need to have license and also registration please understand under the constitution of india we need to keep the federal structure intact that means the state also need to be given complete freedom what kind of doctors are going to practice in their state hence although there may be a single unique id for registration under the national medical commission under the central government the state will decide whether to give state medical license to practice in their state or not and invariably by default they have to give but many a time the state medical council legislation can place some of the reservation and may not allow to practice that means license to practice is different from national registration of unique id further the state medical council means the medical council constituted under any law for the time being in force in any state or in union that means federal structure has been given due importance under the national medical commission that means a reasonable degree of independence has been given to the state there is something called a state register that means once a person gets into license under the national registration under the national medical commission there is also a state register to provide license to practice in that state now let's directly go into the chapter 2 that is national medical commission that is from section 3 to section 10 the here in national medical commission as i mentioned section 3 to section 12 if you look at the national medical commission it's actually is formed by the central government it has 33 members including the chairperson the commission that is national medical commission consists of following persons appointed by the central government there will be a chairperson who has done mbbs and md or ms with 20 years of experience and he needs to be including of 10 years a leader in that field that means he needs to be in the administrative capacity as hod maybe the head of an institution that means he need to have at least 20 years of experience further it also talks about 10 ex officio members 20 two part time members who are these 10 ex officio members four presidents of this autonomous boards they are ug board pg board emrb board and marb one person as an ex officio from director general of health services one person director general of icmr and one director of any all india institute of medical science two directors either from pijmer jipmer tata memorial nigrims or aih and ph one person from central government representation not below the rank of additional secretary there are 22 part time members three members appointed from following areas such as management law medical ethics health research consumer or patient rights advocacy science and technology and economics 10 members to be appointed on rotational basis among us the nominees of the state medical or union medical council for a term of two years only nine members to be appointed from among the nominees of state and union territories of the medical advisory council for two years and there should be under section 5 a search committee for appointment of these members for national medical commission section 6 talks about terms 
of office and condition of services of chairperson and members of this NMC. Here, Section 6, Subsection 1 talks about chairperson and part time members are not eligible for extension or reappointment. That means NMC members cannot be reappointed. They are very clear. Section 6, Subsection 6 talks about the chairperson and every member of the commission shall make declaration of their assets when they join the NMC and also when they exit or they finish their tenure, they need to declare their asset. That means once you join an MC, if you are corrupt and if you are making money, it will be caught. That means here the NMC talks about high transparency. Section 6, subsection 7 talks about the chairperson or a member ceasing to hold office as such shall not accept for a period of two years any employment in any capacity in any of the private medical institution whose matter has been dealt with such person or member directly or indirectly. What does it mean? Suppose you are working as an in National Medical Commission, either maybe a chairperson or else the president of any boards or member of any of the NMC or even the autonomous board. You are not eligible to get an appointment or as an employee of any of the private institution after ending your tenure under NMC for a period of two years, whatever may be the capacity. And suppose if you have dealt with their case with that specific institution, you are barred from going into that job. My dear friends, that means here the ethics and integrity of the NMC members should be very high. That has been clearly made out and has been spelt out in this legislation. Section 7 talks about removal of chairperson and removal of the members of the commission. Section 8 talks about appointment of secretary and also experts, professionals, officers and other employees of the commission. Section 8 is very important. Please understand, there are at least more than 600 medical colleges. That means there are numbers also increasing because the government of India has decided to open one medical college in every district. That we have at least 780 and odd districts. That means we need to have so many medical colleges. These medical colleges, licensing of UG and every PG needs to be licensed. They need to be monitored. They need to be evaluated for their education, for their curriculum and how these number of doctors are there, number of teaching faculty is there, what are the facilities they are providing. These need to be assessed on regularly every year for the new institution, periodically for the old institutions. Hence, we require a huge number of people to do this. That means we require an army to monitor this because medical education is in high demand at this point of time. Whenever there is a high demand and the supply is very less, corruption is by default. Once there is a corruption, the access to medical education, access to health care, becomes a dream and poor people will suffer. With regard to appointment of experts, Section 8, Subsection 7 talks about the Commission may engage any number of experts who have special knowledge and experience in such field including medical education, public health, management, health economics, quality assurance, patient advocacy, health research, science, technology, administration, finance, accounts and law as it deems necessary to assist the Commission in executing their responsibility and also to meet their goals as per the NMC. Section 9 talks about meeting and decision. NMC will set at least once in four months and one half of the, that is 50% of the total number of members along with the chairperson shall form the quorum or constitute the quorum to decide. Decision will be based upon voting. A person who is aggrieved by any decision of the NMC can prefer to appeal to the central government within 30 days. Let's understand section 10. That is power and functions of this National Medical Commission. National Medical Commission is the highest body with regard to medical education, medical education institutions, the doctors, the teachers in these institutions, how they are governed, how they are licensed and registered. Section 10 
gives powers and functions for this NMC. National Medical Commission has an important function to maintain high quality and high standards in medical education, regulating these medical institutions, medical research and medical professionals, develop a roadmap for the meeting the requirements of human resources of health and health infrastructure in India, frame guidelines and lay down policies by making necessary regulations for the proper functioning of the Commission, the Autonomous Board and the State Medical Commission. Coordinating with the Autonomous Board is the responsibility of the National Medical Commission. Take such measure as may be necessary to ensure compliance with the State Medical Council of the guidelines framed and regulation made under the Act. So for the effective implementation of National Medical Commission Act and NMC will act as a appellate jurisdiction with respect to the decision of the Autonomous Board and they also lay down policies and codes to ensure the observance of professional ethics in the medical profession and to promote ethical conduct during the provision of care by the medical professions. And it also envisions to frame guidelines for determination of fees and all other charges in respect to 50% of the seats which are there in private medical institution. That means private medical institution cannot go on charging huge. 50% of the seats are reserved for government. That means poor people or poor students. Exercise such any power and perform such function as may be prescribed by the central government. And also the section 10, subsection 2 talks about all orders and decisions of the commission shall be authenticated by the signature of the secretary. That means the commission as a body will take decision and that needs to be authenticated by the secretary. The commission may delegate such power of administration and finance matter as it deem fit to the secretary and also to the autonomous board. The commission may constitute subcommittees and delegate such power to such subcommittee as may be necessary to enable them to accomplish the specific task and also the goals. Chapter 3 is an important which talks about MAC that is Medical Advisory Council from section 11 to 13. This is MAC my dear friend section 11 to 13. Here the chairperson of the National Medical Council will be the chairperson for Medical Advisory Council also. Every member of the commission will be the ex officio. One member to represent such each state and UT who is a vice chancellor of the health university in that state and to be nominated by the state government or home affairs for the union territory. One member to represent each state, union territory from among the elected members of the state medical council to be nominated by the state medical council. The chairman of the UGC, the director of the national assessment and accreditation council, four members to be nominated by the central government from amongst the person holding the post of directors in IIT, IIM and IIS. The primary functions of the Medical Advisory Council is to advise National Medical Commission. And this Medical Advisory Council is the primary platform through which the State Medical Council, Union Territories and the State will put forth their views and concerns before the National Medical Commission and help in shaping the overall agenda, policy and actions relating to medical education and training across the country. That means in federal structure, the functioning of Medical Advisory Council, Council is very essential so that NMC is properly guided by this Medical Advisory Council. The Council shall advise the Commission on minimum standards in all matters relating to medical education, training research, enhancing the equitable access to medical education for all citizens. 50% of them in the Medical Advisory Council will form the quorum and the decision will be by the majority by vote. And my dear friends, the NMC as a 2019 section 61 and 8 chapter also has autonomous boards. They are dictated from section 16 to section 34. There are four autonomous board. One is undergraduate board, postgraduate board, medical assessment and rating board called as MARB and ethics and medical registration board EMRB. And these boards are autonomous and independent to each other and they are governed by the National Medical Commission. These are the four boards as I mentioned my dear friends. To conclude, National Medical Commission and Medical Advisory Council are the highest body for the medical education and medical profession regulatory bodies under this National Medical Commission Act of 2019. NMC has more power vested 
with the nominated members from the central government. And if you look at the Medical Council of India, it was elected members by the way of politics where the registered medical practitioners will vote. Considering the corruption, the National Medical Commission Act has come through, there is one of the main criticism being the nomination of the members to NMC. And many a time, the state medical council which are formed under the respective state medical council legislation who are elected through a process of election and NMC is through for nomination. Hence, this has been considered seriously and also many have criticized this. However, one need to understand the process of election utterly failed the Medical Council of India. If the Medical Council of India was clean and they did their job as a professional body which looked into the public health policies, which looked into the, the needs of the country with regard to health, the Medical Council of India would have survived. Unfortunately, the corruption forced the government to implement National Medical Commission Act 2019, my dear friends. Hence, the NMC came into picture. In my next video, I'll be discussing about four autonomous bodies. What are their functions? What are their powers? How they are formed? How the members are recruited? And also, how this autonomous body goes to, is going to play a role under NMC. Thank you very much for your valuable time. Stay safe.